Do you have a pencil neck? Every single day when you look in the mirror, all you see is a big head stuck on a popsicle stick. And you want a bigger neck, you really do, but you genuinely believe that it's not safe to put plates on your forehead, the back of your head, or perform bridging of some sort. If that's you, I got some good news. Neck training is not only safe, but it's actually safer than if you did not include it into your training. And let me give you my reasons for that. Number one, how about we observe the populations that do the most neck training? Namely, wrestlers. Wrestlers are doing neck training more than anybody on the planet, yet they have very small injury rates in the neck. As a matter of fact, the only injury rates that I can report are those found in field sports. Whenever there's a collision or a like contact or even a car crash, that's when necks get injured. And what will cause you to get injured from that crash? Not having a thick neck. See, if you take a bunch of weak people and you put them on a field and they're getting hit left and right, up and down, all kinds of twisting motions, and they don't have a thick neck, that's where the concussions arise. That's where the sprains arise. The fact that it matters, having a weak neck contributes to injuries, not the other way around. If you have a strong muscle and somebody hits it, you'll be able to deflect like this, no problem. So as you can immediately see, having a thick neck protects you from injuries. It does not get you injured. Bridging, when you work up to it, is 100% safe. You just have to build up to the exercise. You don't just go in the first day. You maybe want to do some neck curls, neck extensions with some light weight, really build the foundation of your neck, and then you start bridging. You're not going to get injured. Neck curls, if you gradually include a, a progressive overload regimen, you're not going to get yourself injured. If you start off with a 2.5 pound plate, then 5, then 7.5, then 10, and you bring it all the way up to 45, you think it's going to hurt your head when you have a 45 pound plate and you're doing neck curls? No. And the result is going to be increased hypertrophy in the neck muscles. That's how it works. Your, your neck will have to get bigger to accommodate the extra resistance. Otherwise, you would have a pencil neck for the rest of your life. Do you understand how this works? Neck training keeps you safe, especially when you're going to be doing exercises like shrugs, squats, and deadlifts. Sometimes when you're doing high reps, you can feel the back of your neck or you can get sprains. Having a thick neck will prevent that. I have zero, zero neck pain when I perform uh, major compound movements, although I used to in the past because I had a pencil neck. Nowadays, it's absolutely injury free. So let me get back to what I was saying about before about the populations do the, the most tra neck training. Wrestlers, dude, do you know what wrestlers are doing? They're doing bridging, followed guy by guys pushing on the head, followed by guys being on top of them. They're doing the most intense variations imaginable. And if you don't believe me, look at a 90s, like uh, a wrestling documentary that's made in the 90s those instructional videos, you'll see the type of shit they do. It's mind blowing. And all you see is you see these skinny guys, right? Cause they're not really big with these massive necks, 19 inch and above necks. And that's why they're not getting injured because neck training prevents you from getting injured. It's the other way around. People have it all backwards. So listen, if you're tired of having a pencil neck and you think that you're going to get injured, think again, it's not that that's not going to happen. You have to work up to it. Start very, very lightweight. Make sure you warm up, make sure you stretch, do what you got to do, and then gradually increase the weight until your neck increases in proportion to the strength gain. That's how it's going to work. So if you have a 14 and a half inch neck from neck curling your body weight, well, when you're doing a 90 pound neck curl, you're probably going to have an 18 and a half, 19 inch neck, if not more. So that's how it works. Build up to it. Don't fear the neck training. Remember what I told you about the populations do the most neck training. They don't have the injuries. So it's all bullshit. There's guys who've been bridging for 40 years. It's all about working up to it the proper way. And that's all I have for you to say. Get started on that neck training. Pencil necks are not cool. And remember, if you're natural and you get a bigger neck, it instantly makes you look bigger. So that's it for today. Give me your feedback down below. Did you ever injure your neck from not training? I want to know. And with that, I'll talk to you next time.